We've got Sunday night gymnastics from Minnesota, and we have a big time matchup. It's the Minnesota Golden Gophers taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, two top 15 teams going toe to toe. As you take a look at the standings, you see Michigan and Minnesota undefeated. Nebraska also in the running for a Big Ten championship. And hello everybody, I'm Dean Linky. And speaking of Big Ten champions, Olivia Karras won a whole lot of them, including last year's all-around title. And we've got a big time matchup tonight, Olivia. Dean, this is a huge meet to end off a great weekend of Big Ten gymnastics, the biggest meet of the year in the Big Ten. Olivia, so many outstanding athletes to feature. We're going to fill up both screens here. Let's start with Minnesota. Lexi Ramler has been amazing. Big 10 all-around champion last year. Has two perfect 10s this year and a 9.975 on bars. Anna Loper has won the last three all-around titles and is looking to keep that trend going. But don't forget about Ivy Lou. She is a back-to-back -back event specialist for the Big 10 and has a perfect 10 on beam in her career. Now, this story for Nebraska is led by the two Two seniors. Taylor Houchin is number four in the country on vault and doesn't have a bad event. Sierra Hassel is their anchor on beam. And the sophomore, Addie DeJesus, is the final piece of the puzzle. What a performer and brings the passion for the Cornhuskers. And you know it's going to be a barn burner. Of course, Nebraska led by Heather Brink. Remember, she was the first Cornhusker to get a perfect 10. She was the 2000 NCAA All-Around Champion, and she's in the Nebraska Hall of Fame staying at her alma mater. And speaking of coaches staying at her alma mater, how about from Minnesota, Jenny Hansen, a star gymnast for the Golden Gophers, now in her sixth season. She loves the university. And I have to tell you, Olivia, the university loves her right back. They sure do. And I have been looking forward to this meet for quite some time. So I am stoked to see what these two teams have to bring tonight. All right, we're going to step aside and we'll be back for the start. Minnesota, Nebraska, Big Ten, women's gymnastics, prime time on the Big Ten Network. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Good hand washing protects you and can slow the spread of the virus. Use soap and warm water. Be sure to wash both sides between your fingers, fingernails, thumbs, and wrists. Scrub for at least 20 seconds. Wash early and often. Wash your hands. Avoid big groups. Stay home. Don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Welcome back to the Maturity Pavilion, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Some young Cornhusker fans mixing in with the Golden Gopher faithful as we bring you Nebraska and Minnesota. Busy weekend of women's gymnastics. Outstanding results. It was a great weekend for all teams in the Big Ten. Specifically want to highlight my alma mater, Michigan, came out with a great road win against the Iowa Hawkeyes. But lots of great gymnastics going into the Big Five meet next weekend. Maryland getting it done, of course, saving the best for last, arguably the best meet of the year. This is how Minnesota is going to start on the vault. Qualia, Salas, Williams, Ramler, Loper, and Quarles, the freshman, will anchor for Coach Hansen and Minnesota on the vault. That'll be where Minnesota will start. Of course, Nebraska under head coach Heather Brink. You can see her right there in your BTN screen. They'll go with Thaler, Colombo, Versailles Carr, DeJesus, Houchin, and Piringer as three freshmen feature for Nebraska on the bars. Definitely exciting that they have three freshmen in their lineup means that they're relying heavily on young talent but as we talked to coach earlier this week she said that the youngins are take bringing it for them so i'm excited to see how uh they put up big scores this weekend both these teams outstanding check this out nebraska six in the big 10 minnesota third but their national rankings top 25 both of them minnesota really impressive on the vault Minnesota is definitely up their difficulty this year, and they're coming to play. They're not holding anything back, so keep an eye out for them on vault. Minnesota under Jenny Hansen, they're 6-1, and 4-0 in the Big Ten. They have not lost since falling in their opener to Denver. They've won every meet since. Meanwhile, Nebraska, number 15 in the country, they're 4-2, 5-0 and, 
three and one in the Big Ten. Their only losses are to Olivia Karras' Michigan Wolverines, and they lost a non-conference duel against BYU. Nebraska and Minnesota, and Olivia Karras, I know it's been hard for you since leaving. You were such a great athlete at Michigan. So many accolades, including last year, the Big Ten all-around title, where you shared it with Rambler and your teammate at Michigan, but I also know that this meet right here is one you've been looking forward to for quite some time. These two teams have really brought it so far this season, and they're two teams that are up and coming, not only in the Big Ten, but in the NCAA as a whole. Uh, so specifically led by Lexi Ramler for the Gophers and Taylor Houchin for the Cornhuskers, they've got some heart. I'm really excited to see what they can do tonight going into Big Fives. So Minnesota, Jenny Hansen, when we asked her about the vault. She said, we've been really consistent on that event. She said, we've upgraded three athletes starting with 10-0 vaults, and that will certainly play a key role in their scoring. So those upgrades are part of the reason Minnesota comes in 11th in the nation in vault, and they will start with Kristen Qualia, as Qualia Sr. from Minnesota is set to go, averaging a 9-7-7-5. Qualia has just gotten herself back into the lineup the past couple of weeks, so she's looking to start them off with a really nice vault here. Look for that landing. She does a nice Yurchenko full. Nice work by Qualia. She looked a little piked down on the landing, and she had that's why she had to take the, the hop back and the extra step back, but lots of power especially getting off the table right there. She gets some good power, pikes down a teeny bit, and that's why she was moving backwards. But great start for the Gophers on vault. Just that little hop right at the end as we move over to bars. Nebraska, as we showed you earlier, 23rd in the nation, led by Houchin, who's 25th nationally as well. As we get set with Katherine Thaler, a freshman from Houston, Katy High School, part of Stars Gymnastics. Nice release move there, called a shaposh. Right into her pack salto from the high bar to the low bar. It's a requirement to make that change between the bars. Nice handstand there, going into her blindfold double tuck. She's a little over on the blindfold. She seemed to have held on to the bar a little too long going into that dismount, which is why their assistant coach was so quick on his feet to get in there to make sure she was safe and okay but glad to see she made it around safely onto her feet so you can see she was a little over there on the blind change and that's what caused her to land a little closer to the bar than you would hope but nice work getting it around and uh, safely landing all right now we move over to tiari salas as salas sophomore from henderson nevada a high score of nine eight seven five you see Qualia in with a 9.75, and here comes Tiari. This is only her second week vaulting for them, and it's a stuck Yurchenko full. Oh my gosh, she is so excited. I mean, for her second vault it, at Minnesota, that was so impressive. She has a great block off the table. She gets some great distance. She pikes down a little bit, but man, she saw the ground. She knew exactly where she was. Another look here from another angle. Great twist and boom. It almost looked like she tried to hop and she couldn't. I think she's gonna blow through her career high of 9875. Please tell me that's at least a 99. I would hope so, and if not, I'm gonna have to go over there and talk to them <laughs> because that was great. Nebraska, their first ever Italian, a 9-8. Wow. I don't know what they were watching, but a stuck Yurchenko full like that, I would have gone higher on the score, but it's nice to see Tiari get some great reps and competition down and gain her confidence. Yeah, I thought at least a 9-9, but 9-8. Yes, here we go. Clara Colombo, she's from Italy. Part of the Juventus club over there. That was a beautiful piked Jaeger for Clara. Right into her pack salto. Clara has such a nice, for, nice form on bars. 
Hits that handstand beautifully. She does an eagle grip there. Really hard skill to do. Right into her double tuck dismount. Just the tiniest hop forwards, but that was a fantastic routine for the freshman. Beautiful gymnastics to start here. Absolutely, and you can see also how she knows where she is in the air. Look at the height she gets, and she can just see the bar. Great job by Clara. The way of Italy is Clara Colombo. As we move back over to Paige Williams, the senior from Wiley, Texas, averaging a 9.78. She's got a big, powerful vault, and here it comes. Paige flies. I just want to see her get that landing. Big hop on the landing, unfortunately, for Paige, but if you can see when she goes, she flies both up and out. That's what the judges are looking for. She hits the table. I mean, oh my goodness, she flies. She just needs to open her body up in that piked position. She just has to not look as much in a pike. She has to look a little flatter in her hips, and she'll find that landing, and that'll be a massive score for Minnesota. Excellent crowd as it always is for Jenny Hansen and the Minnesota Golden Go Gophers. So Colombo with a 9-8 as Catherine Thaler is up next. Here she goes for a nice Pike Jaeger right into the shoot over. That's a lot of bonus there going towards her routine and she executed it beautifully. Tiniest bit short on that handstand. The blindfold to the double tuck and just a hop forward. That normally means that she let go of the bar a little early, but uh, great routine by Megan there. That was awesome. Megan Versailles Carr, the junior from California. Here's that blind change into the double tuck. Notice how she let her head fall out a little bit. She was letting go for the dismount. That's normally an indication that she's going to fly a little too much forward, but easy things to fix in the gym. Just stuff to get back in the gym and pinpoint a little bit, and that's exactly what Heather was telling us, that they want to pinpoint these small deductions. Lexi Ramler. She lights up the TV every single performance. She, I am such a fan of hers. I have been looking forward to watching her compete this weekend and she excels on vault. It's all about finding this landing for Lexi. So let's see if she can get it here. Nice vault, just a little, she was a little crooked off the table and dipped her shoulder a little bit on the landing which led to a hop forward, but her form is exquisite in the air. She gets a nice pop off the table. And just the hop, a little forward and diagonal, but great vault for Lexi Ramler to get her all-around competition started. A junior from St. Michael, Minnesota, a high of a 9-9 on the vault, averaging this season a 9-8-5. As we move back over to the talented Addie DeJesus has a career high of 9-9. She's competing in the all-around. Her season average this year, Olivia, is a 9.85. Watch the height Addie gets here after that stunning handstand. My gosh, that is so gorgeous. She just can fly. Coach Heather said it's all about the, the, the small little form things for Addie, but if she can stick this landing, this is going to be a huge score. Wow. She got her chest down a teeny bit on that landing. You could tell that she was leaning forward a bit, which led for her to pause a bit. But the height on this dismount is absolutely outstanding. She goes above the bar, rises on the second flip, and just fights for the landing there. Great work by Addy DeJesus. Yeah, her toes dug in. Aggressive throughout the entire routine, which is exactly what Heather Brink said she would bring. Addie is the type of athlete that thrives in a competition setting, and you could tell by that bar routine. So here's Anna Loper. Remember, Olivia Karras already told you that of late, Loper's been winning the all-arounds. And it's going to start right here with this vault, a nice vault with just a hop forward. 
The thing I love about this Minnesota vault rotation is that they're going big. They're not holding back on these vaults, and that's leading to the hops forward, but rather that than hopping backward. Notice how she gets great height, just the hop forward there, but other than that, the execution in the air is stunning. Great job by Anna. Jenny Hansen saying that the relationship between Lexi Rambler and Anna Loper is so strong, which obviously I think is important when you're competing for all arounds almost every time. There's Taylor Houchin, the senior from Republic, Missouri. 9975 is her career high on the bars. This is going to be a highlight of the night. Taylor's technique is second to none. She is so precise. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. I don't think I have ever seen her do that. This is Taylor Houchin last year. A lot different than what we just saw. Taylor is a very technical athlete, and she's very deliberate with her movements, but it looked like she almost overcooked it a bit there on her bail, on her change from the high bar to the low bar, which is such a bummer because that routine was so beautiful. I had no deduction going into that. After you fall off of an event, you get 45 seconds to chalk up, talk to your coach before you get back on the bar, and so here she goes to continue the routine. I always love when athletes get right back up after a fall. It, it's a hard thing to do, but it speaks to our character. And there's a gorgeous handstand even after the fall. And a beautiful dismount for Taylor. We mentioned the championships last year. Let's take a look at what Taylor Houchin did. Obviously, that wasn't the routine that Taylor wanted, but that doesn't take away the fact that she is a stunning bar worker. I mean, check out this dismount from Big Tens last year to a stuck landing. She's stoked. The coaches are stoked. Just a blimp in the road doesn't mean anything. She is absolutely capable of coming back from that. So well said as we move on to the anchor, Maddie Quarles. See. Maddie does a massive Yurchenko one and a half. The reason she's at the end is because of the height she gets. Look at that height and a great landing. She just seemed a little lock-legged when she landed, which means that she didn't land with enough time to, for her legs to bend, for her to absorb the mat. That's something that happens when you get a little excited. I'm a victim of it. It happens, but here's that height, and she just lands a little with her bit with her legs straight, but she looks excited about it, and so does her coach. So the first six are up. So Taylor, with that fall, a 9-4-0. So we'll see if they can drop that. As the Kylie Peringer stepping in there now. She's got the career high of 9.775. Houchin showing that she's human. Keep in mind, Lexi Rambler's got two tens on the beam, and she fell last week. It happens to the best of us, you know, and the best thing about it is Taylor got back up and she finished the routine like she didn't fall. Nice blind change to double tuck there for Kylie. Coach told us that she actually wasn't recruited to do bars. So the fact that she's stepping into this role of the anchor position for the Cornhuskers on bars is a huge accomplishment in itself. We do have bonus coverage tonight as we're gonna be able to show you exhibition is it's gonna be Ali Sonier. So Sonier, the sophomore from Wisconsin, will get a chance to show Jenny Hansen what she can do. And she's been so good this year. Very nice Yurchenko full for her, just the step back. Jenny told us that she could absolutely make it into the lineup. It's just getting the experience on the competition floor. And I think that was a great vault for her, considering that she's fighting for her place in the lineup. Thumbs up from Coach Jenny Hansen. She likes it. I think all of us are a little bit in shock with the fall from Taylor Houchin, but it happens sometimes as Kinsey Roby, who's got a career high of 985 on the bars, she'll get a chance to show her coach what she can do in exhibition. We're still waiting to hear what the score is for Kylie Peringer, and that score will be important because, yeah, they're going to use it as Houchin's fall 9-4 will go away. 
Kinsey is great on this event, and I don't. She hasn't competed bars yet this season, so what a fantastic way to get some experience on the event. Especially after that fall from Taylor Houch, and she's looking to show her coaches that she can be put in the lineup and she can step up. Starts with a really nice handstand after her mount. The blind change and the nice straddle Jaeger right into a shoot over. A little bit of leg separation on that shoot over. Oh no. Over on that handstand. She really went for it though. I love how aggressive she was going into the cast. It's always better to make an aggressive mistake instead of a mistake because you didn't go as confidently into it. So it's not a bad thing that she went over on this handstand. Remember, it's just exhibition, so it doesn't count. So there's a lesson to be learned for her as well. Get right back up there, see this through. And that's exactly what she's doing. She hit that handstand beautifully on her second try. She's gearing up for the dismount, a nice double layout. And just a little hop forward, but despite the fall, a great routine to gain some experience on the floor. Top 15 matchup between Nebraska and Minnesota. Incredible gymnasts, not just in the Big Ten, but nationally. Addie DeJesus, outstanding on the bars, on a loper, brilliant on the vault. We'll switch it when we return. Probably like the rest of you. But I've learned a lot about wood floors. Tonight we got patty cage challenge. <laughs> As you can see, the Monopoly board is set up with a lot of hotels. I'm gonna make the pancakes. Grace is gonna make the, the eggs. You two are going to love the cookies. Just gonna check on the homeschool crew and make sure everything's going okay here. Stay strong, parents. We're gonna get this done. All we can control is right now and trying to maximize our days the best we can. I'm just so grateful family, friends, for loved ones, and the Big Ten. Be a coach, be a teammate, be a friend, be a teacher, be, be a family. family. We are a team. We are a team. We are a family. We got this. We got this. We can do this. We can do this. Tomorrow on BTN, don't miss an exciting women's basketball matchup. It's the Gophers and the Spartans in East Lansing. The action tips off at 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow on BTN and the Fox Sports app. The Minnesota Golden Gophers hosting the Nebraska Cornhuskers through one rotation, a slim lead. Let's take a look at how Nebraska did. Of course, we were all shocked when Houchin fell, but good work by Peeringer to come back with a solid score. It's definitely a great learning experience for a freshman to go after a senior falls in the anchor spot to bring it back home to have a score that's going to count for the team. Excited about what Kylie did for them. Got to like what Eddie DeJesus did as well. And how about the scores for Minnesota on the vault? A lot of consistency there. Minnesota is just going to look to find those landings, and once they do, that score is going to bump up, but a great start for the Golden Gophers. So you see the 49.15 through one rotation, just a slight lead over Nebraska. Nebraska with a 48.725. So Minnesota... See, after one rotation, that's the average score for the five that count. It's helpful to see that that's the score, that if you took the five routines that you saw and we averaged them out, that's what Minnesota did on vault today. Same thing with Nebraska there with the 9.745. That puts it in perspective out of a 10.0, so you can really see where the two teams are on that event from that perspective. Well, and as they now switch and Nebraska moves over to the vault, we can tell you that they're six in the nation, led by the number one athlete, Taylor Houchin in the Big Ten, who's ranked fourth nationally. And you see right there, Minnesota is ninth in the nation. Both these teams are 
unbelievable as you see Minnesota second on the bars in the conference. Minnesota's bars work has been phenomenal this season, specifically honing in on the small deductions that when they're getting rid of them, they are nailing handstands, nailing dismounts. That's what you're looking for in a top 10 team on bars. Specifically for Nebraska on vault, sixth in the nation. Their average is at 49.15, but their high was a 49.4. That's a great vault score for the Cornhuskers. There you see Heather Brink, who says that vault has been a pretty strong event for Nebraska. Top 10 nationally, as we already told you. And she has also upgraded the starting starts for Nebraska. And here we go with Kylie Peringer, the freshman. Still warming up. So Minnesota on the bars as they finish up. They've been really consistent on bars. Show you again the national standings. Of course, Oklahoma always really good, but Michigan and Minnesota in the mix. And Nebraska at 15. Give Illinois and Maryland a whole lot of credit making the top 25. It is so impressive every year to see Big Ten teams make it in that top 25. Teams that are very equal in talent and skill to a lot of these other programs in the SEC, the Big 12, the Pac-12. It's really exciting to see these Big Ten schools get the recognition they deserve. Final huddle for Minnesota. What do you remember about this huddle? What's the message usually, Olivia? Well, Scott Sherman, our bars coach, always used to tell us to be aggressive, but he also was great about saying, hit your handstands, swing, and stick the landing. He was always very clear about that. All right, here we go. Kylie Peringer, Olivia Karras already pointing out that she was able to clean up after Houchin fell on the bars, and now she'll be the leadoff on the vault. So Kylie Peringer, part of this Bright future, the freshman from Ramsey, New Jersey. Kylie's looking for the landing on this Yurchenko full. Let's see if she can get it. Nice work, just a little bit low with her chest on the landing, which led to the hop backwards. But uh, Coach Heather Brink told us that she's gaining a lot of experience leading off this lineup for them and that she just needs to find the landing. The vault itself is beautiful. Notice the pop she gets off the table and just kept her shoulders down a little bit, which led to the hop backwards. I feel like there's all-around champions everywhere. We know Heather Brink was an all-around champion. Lexi Rambler's an all-around champion. You're an all-around champion. And Megan Schweighoffer is now an undergraduate assistant coach for Nebraska. She's a former Big Ten all-around champion. Megan is great. Her gymnastics was so beautiful. I always loved watching her compete. So it's awesome to have her on the sidelines helping these girls out. All right, so here we go with Nebraska on bars. 9-7-0, by the way, for... Here she start, starts off with a really nice handstand. Going into her release move, a piked Jaeger right into an immediate shoot-over. Gearing up to find this last handstand over the bar. Nice work. Blind change. Can she find the landing? Yes, she can. A beautiful stuck double tuck by Kristen, and she holds the landing. Absolutely gorgeous routine. Coach Jenny told us that she is a reliable leadoff. They know she will hit, and she hit for sure. Check out this landing. Her chest is upright. She saw the ground and the college salute. How about that salute? That was big time and well-deserved. Great leadoff there by Kristen Qualia as we move back over to Megan Versailles' car, the junior from California, 9.875 average and high. She has a big vault here. It's going to be all about the landing, and that was a beautiful Yurchenko one and a half for Megan. Just the small hop forward, but she definitely minimized the distance she hopped forward on that. Check it out here. She gets a nice pop off the table. Little knees in the air, but just that little hop forward. Probably a tenth hop, I'd say, so I'm hoping that she gets rewarded for that height. Little fist bump there with Addy De Jesus. Kristen Qualia. 9.875, a new career high for the senior. 
as Hannah Wilmarth, the junior from Boulder, Colorado, averaging a 9.725. So fun to watch, according to her head coach, Jennifer Hansen. She's got a new element that she has added in that you can tell us about. She's going to be adding in a stalter move at the end of her routine after we just watched that gorgeous Ray into a beautiful shoot over that her body position, her legs, her toes, my goodness here's that new move the stalter you notice her arms were a little bent it's a new skill for her and the double tuck dismount with just a hop back but a new skill in an already difficult routine she executed it really well for it being new but notice as she goes into it she doesn't touch her feet to the bar her arms are a little bent she looks to muscle it but the team is jumping up and down in the background they know she's working hard to perfect that and just the hop back but a great routine for Hannah especially coming off the emotion of Qualia with that career high feeling her emotion and talk about an athlete that brings emotion Addie De Jesus was brilliant on the bars let's see what she can do on the vault she's already had a 995 for a career high now watch this ball Addie explodes off the table and just a little lock-legged on her landing. Just a reminder what that means. Lock-legged means that she landed with her legs straight, which is not what you want to do in gymnastics. You want to absorb the landing, safety of your legs and your knees. But my gosh, the height, and just lands a little funky there, which caused her to do that hop forward. But another great vault, 10-0 start value for Nebraska. I like the spunk and fire that she brings as Heather Brink said another piece to the puzzle. One superstar after another, though, as Anna Loper gets ready. The junior from Bluffton, South Carolina, with a super clean routine on the bars. Incredible lines for Loper. Coach Jenny Hansen said you could always count on Anna Loper to hit and hit well. 985 for Eddie De Jesus as. You also see a 985 for Hannah Wilmarth, who went right before Anna Lopers, ready to go. Looks like Coach Hansen still talking to the judges about something. Jennifer Hansen singing the praises of one Olivia Karras this week, which had to be very special to you. I know you've got mad respect for her, but she said, yeah, Olivia Karras was an all-around champion, but for me, the best part that she remembered about you, and I remember it as well, when you tore your Achilles, how you stepped up and got behind your team and you didn't pout about it. You know, there's a lot of things that go into mindset, and I was very lucky to have many people around me that helped with my mindset, but here goes Anna Loper for her beautiful bar routine. She starts off with a really big shaposh right into immediate pack salto. That's her connection bonus and her ch bar changes. You have to do three of them and she just finished her third. Gorgeous final handstand for Anna. Just looking for that dismount on the blind change to double tuck. And it was the oh, the smallest hop on her landing. I want to be like, Anna, you didn't need to do that. But beautiful routine for her. Exactly what Coach Jenny told us. She is reliable. And here's another look at that dismount. Just the smallest minuscule hop back, but a nice routine by Anna Loper. Loper's career high is a 9.875. As we move back over to Taylor Houchin, the senior from Republic, Missouri, Republic High School, part of gold medal gymnastics. And I know Taylor's looking to redeem herself from that bar routine. Oh my goodness, that was gorgeous. The height, her body position, everything about that ball is so technically correct. Notice how her hands are so together. She hits the table, her legs are together, everything is good. I don't even know if that was a stick or a hop, I can't tell, but it was so gorgeous in the air, so technically perfect. I think that was a stick i can't tell it was so minor yeah the toes maybe popped just a little bit but a nine nine five for taylor halchin just below her career high so perhaps just that tiny little hop right there is 
We now move back over to Tiari Salas, as Salas, the sophomore from Henderson, Nevada. And we've seen a lot of Jaegers and Shaposhnikovas in this routine, but in past routines, excuse me, but this routine really brings a new level of unique skill. Watch this here. She's going to do something called a corkina, where she goes over the bar in a straddle half position. You don't see those very frequently, and Tiari does it exquisitely well. Hit that last handstand. She just needs to stick this dismount. <laughs> oh, and she does. Oh my gosh, I didn't see anything wrong with that routine. Tiari Sa Salas was beautiful on bars. That is a stuck landing right here. That is what I like to call the perfect stuck landing, included with the look of shock and excitement from Tiari. Look at this. She knows where she is, and her coach is losing it. I love the energy that's happening right now in this building. Olivia, absolutely no doubt stuck landing. That is going to be a monster score. We'll get it to you when we hear it. In the meantime, we started the show talking about the seniors, Houchin and Hassel. This is Hassel. Here goes Sierra for her Yurchenko full. Unfortunate right there because she flared it out so beautifully to look for the landing, but it almost looked like she did too much that she couldn't get her feet underneath her. Look at the height, opens it up, and then just missed the landing right there, but a beautiful vault before the landing. Nothing to be upset about for Sierra. Still a little bit shocking though. We saw Houchin fall on the bars and that's essentially a fall right there for Hassel on the vault. The two seniors gonna have to pick each other up and perhaps some of the youngsters are gonna have to step up. Now here's the senior from Canada, Ivy Liu. A high score of a 9.975 average and on this season, 9.845. Jennifer Hansen really just had four words to say as you see the 9.8 from Salas. She said, Ivy Lou, just beautiful to watch. Ivy's bars is breathtaking. I could put it on loop in my apartment and just watch it forever. It's so gorgeous. She hits the handstands, her toe point, her legs, everything about her bar work and technique is exquisite beautiful routine so far just gets gearing up for this last handstand before the dismount nice great body position great control see if she can find this landing here and just a hop back for ivy but otherwise a fantastic routine she really knows how to work everything she does perfectly all of her technique is excellent. She gets the perfect position right there. Just piked it down a teeny bit too much on the landing, but an overall beautiful routine for the Golden Gophers. Well done by Ivy Lou. Last to go for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Kinsey Roby. There was some debate whether it was gonna be Curtis or Roby. She's gonna do a nice Yurchenko full here. Really pretty in the air, just a substantially large hop backwards, which is going to hurt her score, unfortunately, but a great vault for Kinsey, especially coming back into the lineup. Take another look here as she hits the table, nice block off the table, and just pikes it down a lot, which led to the hop backwards, but a really nice vault for her to get some confidence under her belt. Ivy Lou, 9-9-0, oh, and here comes Lexi Rambler on the bars, career high, 9-9-7-5, averaging just under a 9-9 this year. Really nice first handstand for Lexi. She does her shaposh right into a pack salto. The thing about Lexi is her legs never come apart. They are always together, no matter what she does. Really nice last handstand, just the dismount here. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful bar routine for Lexi Rambler. That was exquisite. I didn't see a deduction personally, but what do I know? But that was beautiful. Check out this dismount. She, her toes are perfectly pointed in the air. She sees the landing, she holds it. She is a superstar. 
Her teammates were flashing tens. Kayla Curtis for exhibition. This will not count. She's going to do a Yurchenko full. A little bit. She almost looked like she missed her block a little bit. I remember doing that numerous times in my career, and it's really hard to keep the vault going after the block because that's the, the beginning of all of it. But she missed it a little bit, pikes down a teeny bit, and that's what brought her chest forward right there. But a good vault still for Michaela Curtis. Lexi Rambler tying her career high, 9.975. That is why the Maturi Pavilion is going crazy. Big time score. Lou had a big score. I actually thought Salas deserved a better score as well. Perhaps her start value wasn't as high, but Salas was beautiful. Those were three outstanding performances on the bar in a row. And now we get to see more as Minnesota will also send out one for the exhibition. But as we get set for this exhibition, one more time, Olivia, Salas, Lou, Ramler, three outstanding performances. All three of those athletes are so great on bars for different reasons. I would say that Tiari Salas is so explosive on bars, but then Ivy Lou is a little softer in her movements, and Lexi Ramler just takes it home with an exquisitely perfect routine technically perfect, the emotion in it. It's a bar routine. There's not a lot of emotion, but she somehow brings emotion into it. But a 9975 seems low to me. I'm going to put that out there. I thought it was a 10. <laughs> Big scores, though, for the final three. Nebraska's not going to go away, though. Great recovery from Taylor Houchin on the vault. And Lexi Rambler could be chasing down an all-around 9975 on the bars. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From hooves to hands and paws to possibilities. Discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. Big time matchup between two top 15 teams, Nebraska and Minnesota, and it's a tight one. Minnesota with less than a point lead. We're so pleased to be joined by Heather Brink now in her second season at Nebraska. You were an all-around champion in 2000, Heather, so I'm going to ask you to talk about all of the talent on display today. Both teams loaded, Coach. Absolutely. I think, you know, the Big Ten has a great talent uh, from top to bottom. I think it's showing up. We're becoming more and more competitive uh, throughout the nation and as a conference. Looking forward to uh, seeing it continue to grow. Heather, you had two uncharacteristic falls from your seniors. Sometimes being a senior, it comes with a lot of pressure. What are you looking from them in these next two events? You know, to step up, be the leaders on the team, doing what we do in practice, bring in the fun, kind of bring in the energy, and, and just showing them what we're made of. You are kidding about Addie DeJesu. She does bring the fun in everything she does. Talk a little bit about her. Oh, yeah. She's got an uh, energy about her. I would call her kind of our heart and soul of this team. Uh, really steps up, brings a lot of uh, notoriety as far as people usually notice her and her performance value. Look for her on floor uh, to deliver that as well. Heather, we're expecting big things from you at the Big Fives and in Columbus for the Big Ten Championships. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. All right. Heather Brink, 2000 NCAA All-Around Champion. As you saw the focus there of Eddie DeJesus. This is how Heather Brink's team did on the vault. They were led by that 995 from Taylor Houchin. It's a beautiful vault by Taylor. She has such great technique. She found the landing. She did a great job recovering from that uncharacteristic fall on bars. Take a look at how Minnesota did on the bars. The crowd was rocking as the four, five, and six spots. Nine, nine from Ivy Lou, and then Lexi Rambler so close to that perfect 10, nine, nine, seven, five. They have a great lineup on uneven bars. The Golden Gophers have really put a lot of effort 
effort and emphasis into the right things to make their scores skyrocket. Right, we're going to update our average as well through two rotations. Remember, Minnesota leading by less than a point. You see right there, that's the average through two. Great start for both teams. I mean, definitely a shock to most of us about Taylor Houchin on bars and Sierra Hassel's uncharacteristic fall on vault, but the Cornhuskers have two great events left, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they can come back from those uncharacteristic mistakes. A little extra focus for Minnesota. You need that on the beam where Minnesota is second. They, this has been their best event all season, and they pretty much have the same lineup as last year, which that pays dividends when you can go run the same team back again. This Minnesota team is really experienced on beam, and that's the hardest part of competing beam in college is competing any event for that matter is the constant repetition is so helpful for your confidence. So having a team and a lineup that's pretty much the same as last year gives a lot of confidence to this, the rest of the Minnesota team that they know what they're doing. They can go up there and hit when they need to. Second in the country, Minnesota on beam. Already this year, Lexi Rambler has had perfect tens, not once but twice, as they'll start with Ali Sonier. Sonier will start on the beam for the Minnesota Golden Gophers, the sophomore from Wisconsin. Here she goes. Allie's been their leadoff since the beginning of last year, so she's definitely comfortable in this role, a role that I would personally consider the hardest place to go in all four events and lineups. Great series there. Series is when you connect two, uh, two moves together to give her the connection value and to show that she can connect two skills. Nice full turn. Getting ready for her jump. She's going to do a beat jump into a straddle three-quarter. Solid. She does a three-quarter jump, means she lands sideways on the beam, even harder than landing straight on the beam. That was another beat jump into a standing layout step out. I have seen no wobbles so far in this leadoff routine. You can tell that Allie is comfortable here and that she's worked really hard to be solid. Just the dismount, she did a back handspring up to a back handspring on one arm into a one and a half twist. Just the hop on the landing. See, there's the first back handspring. Then she does the, stand, the layout step out, nails it. Great job for a leadoff beat routine. Excellent start for Minnesota. Nebraska on the floor, they're eighth in the country. Their high this season, Olivia, is a 49-4-5. They're averaging a 49-2-8-8. They'll start with Michaela Curtis, the junior from Savannah, Georgia. She's part of Summit Gymnastics. Michaela is a great leadoff on floor for the Cornhuskers. She's going to start here with a double pike. Great landing. Just a teeny scoot back of the foot, but she had great control there. That's what you're looking for on landings, is showing that you've landed it before you take the lunge backward. That's what you would call a controlled landing. She's gearing up for her second pass, which is a front full to a front layout. Another controlled landing. That's exactly what the judges are looking for in order to not take a deduction. Curtis coming off a great performance against Maryland, one that Heather Brink said it was one of the best of her career some fun dance here. It's actually a requirement that you are go lower on the floor, that you're changing heights within the routine. So this is her required dance. Really cool move right there up on her toes. That in itself is pretty hard. Just a couple last deep breaths before her last tumbling pass. This is a great leadoff routine so far. Hopefully Michaela can get a controlled landing here and lead them off really strong. Gonna do a double tuck last pass. She landed a little low and had to take a lunge forward, but she landed on her feet safely and nicely. This is what you would call a two double back routine as she does her first pass in a piked position. Nice landing there on the first pass. And then a look at her last pass, which is another double flip, but in the tucked position. 
lands it a little low there, but pulls it out and sells it and safely lands. All right, so we'll move back over to Ivy Lou. You see Sonia with that 985. It's now Lou, number two in the country on the beam. Lou has had a perfect 10 in this event. Of course, Rambler has had two this year on the beam. It is a, a privilege to have one athlete with a perfect 10 in your beam lineup. How about two? And she's starting it off very confidently with that series. Back handspring, lay out, step out. As you watch, Lou, we want to tell you that Minnesota actually got some updated scores, well-deserved scores. So now the new average you can see on the lower right-hand corner of your BTN screen. Ivy is so confident and poised in this routine. She almost looks like she's on the floor, which is such a talent to have. Uh, it's really impressive. She's dancing, she's focused, but she's also, she's tumbling like she's on the ground. It's amazing. It's a great, what we call a side summy skill. She started forward, she did a little quarter turn and landed sideways and just the dismount, a cartwheel gainer full to a stick. Great routine by Ivy Lou. Jennifer Hansen said, look, I get it. Lexi Ramblers had the perfect tens. Anna Loper's been great, but do not sleep on Ivy Lou. Check out that landing. Her foot was slightly off the beam, and she maneuvered to get it back on. Here's that side semi skill. Really nice work. I wouldn't consider that the prettiest skill, and she makes it look pretty. And the dismount. Notice her body is so flat in the air, and the height she gets is unmatched. All right, everybody buckle in now for Addie DeJesus as she gets set. The sophomore from Connecticut, dual citizenship with Puerto Rico and the USA, described by her head coach, Heather Brink, as feisty. She is a party in an athlete. I love watching Addie do floor. She can tumble, she can dance, and she can sell it. Here she goes for her first pass, a double tuck massive height just to scoot back on her front foot but she managed to get a great landing there Olivia you know the deal a lot of times at Michigan when somebody like Andy de Jesus would come in the Michigan fans would sit back and appreciate her even though she's on a, a different team the great thing about the Big Ten is the fans love good gymnastics and fun routines that was a great combo pass she did right there a one and a half into a front layout step out strutted right out of it and kept dancing it's her leap series lost the toe point the teeniest bit but she gets great height on her jumps which is a testament to how strong she is and her power just the last pass here She's gonna end it with a double pike. Great landing. And now she can have a little party before she salutes. Look at that smile, I love it. Great routine by Addie DeJesus. So much fun to watch Addie DeJesus soak it in. I'm just smiling watching her. How can you not? She gets ready for this last pass, massive double pike. Just the tiniest scoot back with her foot, but a great controlled landing and a testament to their cardio. I mean, she doesn't even look tired. Pretty good amplitude as well on that pass we just saw. As we move back over to Anna Loper. Resting mount for Loper. As you see the score for Ivy Lou, a 9-9-2-5. Anna is one of those athletes that you can just count on. You know, she is a great competitor, but she's also a very technical athlete, as you can see on that beautiful back handspring layout series there. She's flowing very nicely through this routine. Getting ready for front toss into a beat jump. Another combo there that'll give her bonus leading up to her perfect 10 start value. So her jumps, a switch leap into a straddle corner. This routine is packed with difficulty. She just keeps going. That is a testament to her skill level, what she has in her back pocket. 
keep in mind as you see those scores, remember to compare them to the averages you're seeing on the floor. Little hop right at the end there for Loper. Great routine otherwise. I mean, even with the hop, that was a solid routine with very minimal ex uh, execution deduction. She gets a nice lift off the beam and just the tiniest little hop there, just like she had on her bar dismount. So as you look at the scores, make sure you take a glance at the average through two to see if there's any improvement or how they're hanging in. They're pretty close, but remember Minnesota leading through two rotations. The Cornhuskers trying to get it done on the floor opposite of how good Minnesota is on the beam. Here goes Taylor Houchin on floor. Definitely looking to recover after the fall on bars, but check out this two and a half twist. She is just dropped out of the sky and lands beautifully on the ground. Yeah, I feel like Houch had already, when she did her vault, made up for her start on the bars and she's keeping it going on the floor. She is such great technique. It's really hard to do twisting skills as you have to take off for the twist at the perfect time. She really did a nice job there with that. Really pretty leaps, getting a nice position in the air, showing control on the landing. Comes her next pass, it's a round off one and a half to a front full, loaded with difficulty there. As Heather Brink said, she's a human trampoline. <laughs> That's such a fun way to describe it. This routine is a great way to showcase her elegance as well as her tumbling. Getting ready just for her last pass, a double pike. She almost looked a little soft-legged in her landing. She just seemed like she didn't react quick enough to get the lunge and had to unfortunately step out of bounds, which is a one-tenth deduction. So that's not going to be something they're looking for in their final score. And hopefully they can drop her score, but she gets a really nice lift, gets there on the landing, just a little slow in reacting to the lunge and unfortunately has to step out of bounds. She has been bothered by an ankle. She had ankle surgery. It's worth mentioning that as we've seen a couple tumbles uncharacteristic for Houchin. As we now go to Mary Corlin Downs. What a cool mount that was. How about it? She stands there and just blindly jumps backwards hoping the beam will be there. Really cool way to start off the routine. What a like power statement, you know? Gearing up for her series. It's a back handspring layout step out. Lifts her leg a little bit. She almost looked a little uncertain of the of the landing and dances out of it. It's the thing about gymnasts, they can just add stuff. Really nice high jumps. That split jump into that double stag. What about Coach Hansen talk about how she takes her time up there? You talked about you just wanted to get off of there. She soaks it in. I remember doing beam. I used to think, how fast can I get off of this thing without <laughs> making it look like I'm nervous? And the wonderful thing about Mary is that she takes her time and finishes each movement very deliberately. Just gearing up for that dismount, a side aerial to a full and a stuck landing. Oh. That was a great routine. Started with an amazing mount. Look at this. She jumps backwards and grabs the beam. I don't know many people who do that, but I am thoroughly impressed by everyone who tries that. And then she ends it and caps it off with this great side aerial full. Sticks it, holds it, salute. And Coach Hansen is so right. She does not rush any part of that routine, including that amazing mount as she did it. She held on for an extra second just so you could enjoy it a little bit more. Testament to her confidence in her gymnastics, you know? The more unsure you are, the more you want to get off. But the more confident you are, hang on. All right, Sarah Hassel, remember she had that fall on the vault. She can make up for it now. The senior from Johnston, Iowa, Johnston High School, part of Triad Gymnastics. Sierra is so consistent on floor, as you could see in that first pass and that second pass. She has a wonderful air awareness. She definitely knows where the ground is and how to make sure she can land safely. Keep an eye for that permagrin as well because there might be focus in the other events, but 
She is always smiling on the floor, Olivia Kara style. She is always smiling, and Coach Heather Brink told us she has the cutest dimples on her cheek when she smiles. So I love to see someone smile and enjoy herself when she's on floor. So at the end of the day, that's the best part about floor. You get to show your personality and dance and enjoy and feed off the energy. Just the last pass here for Sierra. She can get this landing. I suspect a really big score, and that was a great final Rudy to straddle jump. She got some extra height there on the jump and a dramatic exclamation point. Sierra Hassel, dimples and all, the permagrin and a quality performance as right now Minnesota and Nebraska are going back to back with great performances. There's this final pass, the Rudy into the massive straddle jump. Lands it perfectly. Nice job by the senior. All right, so we move back over to Minnesota. And once again, we get a shot at Tiari Salas, who I think's had an outstanding meet for Minnesota. We could have added another face to start the show, and it would have been Salas for sure. She totally got robbed on bars. I don't know what the deductions were. Maybe it was a start value issue, but she is a great technical athlete. As you can see there, that was rock solid. That's what we call a triple series. She did three elements in a row, where normally people just do two. She goes, I can do three. Great what's, leaps there. You know what's interesting? If you take Rambler, Lou, and Loper and combine them all together, I feel like you get solace, right? I mean, she's got all their qualities. She really does. She has a... a essence of her on the beam that is just so fun. She makes it look enjoyable and exciting. Just the dismount of Gainer Pipe to a stuck landing. Tiari Salas, that was beautiful. She really knows how to work the beam. And that wasn't an easy routine. This is the triple series. She goes back handspring, back handspring, floaty layout step out, rock solid. She ends the routine with a massive gainer pike off the end, holds the landing. Great fifth spot routine for the Golden Gophers. That is clean. A career high of 9975 coming in. Not sure if she'll get that, but she is knocking on the door of tens. And Lexi Ram will be up next. Before we see her, though, we go back to the freshman who has been strong, looking kind of like a senior in Kylie Peringer. Kylie is going to do a double layout on floor. This is only her second time doing this pass. It's a big test here to see how she can nail it. Great job on that first pass. That's called an E-tumbling pass, which means it's much more difficult than what we've seen already in the double tuck and the double pike. It's hard to do in general. Her junior Olympic routine, and she's bringing it back after having ankle surgery this summer. Great middle pass there. She's got a really good start here to her floor routine. Coach Heather Brink told us that before Kylie goes on floor, she tells her, Kylie, this is your event. This is your place to shine. And so far, it looks like she's listening to her coach's words very well. Getting ready for this last pass here. Big double pike to a stuck landing. Her chest was a little low on that landing. The judges might have to take a small deduction there, but the control on the landing was excellent. A freshman from Ramsey, New Jersey. Solid meet for Kylie Perringer. Just the second time she's done this in competition, and she nailed it. Really nice body position, just a little legs there, but the team loves it. They're screaming on the sidelines. So here we go. Lexi Rambler, not once, but twice. Perfect tens already this season on the beam. Let's take a look at them. Here is a clip from her first perfect 10 on beam. And then next, the next week at home, she did it again. 
don't know about you, Dean, but I've been looking forward to this the whole day so far. I've got the permagrin now. Lexi is actually coming off of a fall last weekend on beam. And knowing how gymnasts are, we're all perfectionists. I know that she wants to redeem herself more so than score another perfect 10. Nails that series. I love that she's smiling. I can't believe that she's up there mid-jump just smiling. It's such a, it's so awesome. I love seeing athletes enjoy themselves when they compete. It's a beat jump into a split ring jump. That is a really difficult skill as she takes her eyes off the beam and just the dismount, a side aerial full to a stick. What a redemption from last weekend, Dean. That was phenomenal. Two perfect tens, a rare fall, and this will be close to a 10. It's another look at that side aerial full dismount. Sees the ground, holds it. She's thrilled. Lexi Rambler. We could be looking at a national champion, let alone a Big Ten champion, as we move over to Abby Johnson, sophomore. Parkland, Florida, Stoneman Douglas High School, part of the American Twisters. Abby actually had so shoulder surgery this summer, so she's coming back from a surgery and is anchoring their floor lineup. What a great confidence builder for her. We can't tell you, Lexi, 9975. Abby's gearing up for her second pass, a double pike. Oh no, she looked a little open in the air. And if you noticed her, her body was not really piked, it was kind of laid out. So she missed the set a teeny bit, which led to her putting her hands down. How do you wipe that away? Because you still got some work to do. It's hard, let me tell you. I mean, the last thing you want to do is to finish a routine you know you already didn't do your best at. But I'm really impressed still with her performance quality and how she's continuing this routine, even knowing it's not her best. You can see in her eyes she's definitely upset, but this is a team sport, remember? You never know what's going to happen. You have to keep going as if nothing happened. And she ends really nicely with her combination pass, a whip half into a front full. Of course not the routine she wanted, but there's that smile. That's leadership ending even with a smile, knowing you didn't do your best. So Abby Johnston, as you said, you can see it in her eyes after this pass. She sets right there a little backward, which led to her not having the right position in the air. Lexi Montgomery will have a chance to go on the beam. Exhibition won't count. She's from the Colony, Texas. This is a great opportunity for Lexi to go in a competition setting at home, gain experience on this event. Really nice series there. Just the tiniest balance check. It almost looked like she dipped her shoulder and was a little uncertain of her positioning on the beam, but nice recovery. Really nice jump combination there. She did a beat jump into a straddle half. Really hard skill. That's a front tuck on the beam. It actually was, its value was raised from a D to an E, which means she gets two bonus tents for that. And a round off one and a half, just a small landing, but she looks so excited. I love to see that energy. This crowd is excited. Big time gymnastics, top 15 matchup, Minnesota and Nebraska. Minnesota leads through three. Are appreciated the talent. I will tell you, I'm appreciated. I know everybody on BTN enjoying it as well. Everybody delivering for your team tonight. Yeah, we've been on fire so far. It's been really fun. It's, it's great to see every athlete go up, do their job, and do it with confidence. Jenny, your beam lineup is fantastic. Talk about the emotions during that lineup in front of this home crowd. 
Well, you know, uh, I think they love the energy, first of all, but they just have such confidence in one another. And first person goes out and nails. It just keeps building one athlete after another. And uh, I really do. I love our beam team. They're so fun to watch. And uh, it feels really good after an event like that. You got something cooking, Coach. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right. Jenny Hansen. She was an outstanding gymnast at Minnesota. Now an outstanding coach at Minnesota. And we want to remind you, Wednesday on BTN, an exclusive hoops doubleheader begins with Michigan at Rutgers. Then Indiana heads to the barn to take on Minnesota. Big Ten Super Wednesday presented by U.S. Cellular, only on BTN and the Fox Sports app. Through three rotations, this crowd has loved every minute of it. The Minnesota Golden Gophers looking every bit like a top 10 team in the country. And I got to say, Olivia Karras, looking every bit like a team that can challenge your Michigan Wolverines. I am very impressed with what I'm seeing from this Minnesota team. If you look at the, uh, after three rotations, Minnesota's averaging a 9.877. Uh, during this meet. That is a really impressive score and that's getting them towards a really great all-around score for the team. Let's take a look at the all-around standings. Lexi Ramler leading. Of course, Anna Lopers won the last three all-arounds for Minnesota, but right now it's Ramler. Eddie DeJesus is in the mix and I'm not surprised that Miss Tiari Salas is also in the race. She's been outstanding. She's had a great meet so far. I'm excited to watch her on floor. Jenny Hansen said the band was going to be here adding to the environment, and you can feel it. I feel like the gymnasts can feel it. I can sense their energy from here, and I love it. They are feeding off of this crowd exactly how they should be. Let's see what the corn huskers can do. It's never easy to finish on the beam. Let's take a look at how the ghost did on the beam number two in the country for a reason one through six quality all the way home they did a great job on beam and just kept the energy going from a fantastic bar rotation and here they go on floor you see that 985 to start them off from Ali Sonier that's a really great starting score leading all the way until Lexi Rambler's 9975 yeah if you drop a 98 you're living good on the beam Take a look at how Nebraska did on the floor. Remember, Halchin stepped out of bounds. That's part of the reason she had a 9-5. And then, of course, Abby Johnston with the fall to start on that initial pass. She powered through. Addie DeJesus has been a rock. Remember, we told you she's in the all-around story, that 9-8-2-5. Of course, there's Sierra Hassel's 9-8-7-5 for a great routine for the senior. A really nice way to bounce back after that fall on fault. So Eddie DeJesus, big smile for her head coach Heather Brink. This is new for Addie to lead off beam. Coach Heather Brink was telling us that last year she had Addie exhibition a beam routine and Addie was so mad that she had to go because she ended up falling three times. And now look at her, she has made her way into the beam lineup, not just in the lineup, in the most crucial role of the entire meet as the leadoff. That's how much confidence Heather has in her. Everybody's got their own deal. What was that final conversation she had right there? Usually it's your teammate or your coach telling you to just have fun and trust yourself. The last thing you need to hear before you go is corrections on skills. It's more about enjoying the moment. We see the fourth rotation rankings right there. Both these teams very strong. Nebraska on the beam. Nebraska and Minnesota on the floor. That was a massive backhand spring layout for Addie. She looked a little bit there like she wobbled on some dance. She got a little ahead of herself, but the skills she's doing are big and beautiful. Nice jump there. That's called a sheep jump. She, again, took her eyes off the beam. She didn't do any turning in the skill, but she not only is on a four-inch beam, she removed her eyes from a four-inch beam, making that a really hard skill to execute. Side aerial there, really nice landing so far. This is a great routine for Addie. Just 
gearing up for her dismount here. See if she can find the landing. She does a cartwheel to a double twist. Just the tiniest hop back, but a great starting routine for the Corn Huskers. It's hard enough to do a double twist on beam from a round off. She does it from a cartwheel. She has so much height that she can just pop up and do that double twist out of less momentum. Really impressive. All right, we move over to the floor for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. As you see the line up there, a couple of sophomores, then a freshman. Minnesota, they're high on the floor, 49-3-5. Jennifer Hansen says they've been improving each and every week as they start with Ali Sonier. She had a really nice split one and a half jump there. That's a unique jump. I haven't seen that done in a while, and she did it really well. Nice big double pike. Had a little extra juice and slid back a bit, but that's what you want to see from these floor routines. You want to see your athletes have that extra power. Little retro music going, kind of a matrix feel to her floor routine. Really nice dance there for Allie, getting ready for her second tumbling pass. A little funky there. She almost looked like she missed the punch, but really impressive getting that to her feet and making sure she didn't fall. That was really nice. Those combo skills, they'll get you. You gotta make sure you're right on time with where you're supposed to punch. And just the last pass here, it's gonna be a one and a half to a punch layout, just like that. You can see how she punched and it rose on the second flip. That's the exact timing you're looking for. High fives for the team as we see her second pass. She does a front full into the front layout. Notice how that front layout didn't get as much height as the last front layout. That's just because she missed the punch a little bit, but not a fall. All right, we move back to the beam. Michaela Curtis, junior from Savannah, Georgia, went to Islands High School, part of Summit Gymnastics. Career high, 9-9 on the beam for the Cornhuskers. Kayla does a really unique combination here. It's going to come at the early end of the routine. It is a wolf jump into a front tuck. Right here you're going to see really hard to stay squared on the beam. And even though she lifted her leg a little as a balance check, that's a really impressive skill to execute. How about Heather Brink telling us her career high came against Michigan State and Heather Brink's earring fell off. Michaela Curtis saw the earring while she was on the beam and just put a focal point on the earring, delivered a 9-9. Heather was like, should I just take an earring out each time and put it under the beam for you? But you always have, if you can find that almost distracting thing to take your nerves away, it helps. But she's doing a great job right now. Even after that small wobble early on in the routine, she is bringing, putting together a really nice routine in the second spot. Just the dismount here for Michaela. It's going to be a round off one and a half. Just the smallest hop backwards, but great routine. Heather Brink loved it. She's got both her earrings on right now. so <laughs> She gets a really nice pop off the beam, flares it out a little there at the end, and just the smallest hop back, but Heather loves it, the team loves it, and she loves it. All right, great start for both teams is... We move back over to Tiari Salas, who, for me, she may not win the all-around, but I would give her votes for gymnasts of the meet. Just the, her production, kind of in the shadows of some superstars. She's been outstanding. Couldn't agree more, and this routine couldn't fit her more perfectly. Starts off with a really nice double pike to a stuck landing. Coach Jenny Hansen told us she actually helped create this music. She helped cut the music to make something that she felt comfortable and excited to dance to. And I would say it's working to her favor so far. She looks like she's having a ball out there.
really fun music, really fun routine so far for Tiari. Another 9.75 on the beam for Nebraska. And I got to tell you, I'm starting to think about Columbus, Ohio, the Big Ten Championships, Michigan, Minnesota, Nebraska, some young teams coming up. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a really exciting weekend in Columbus, Ohio for the Big Ten Championships. I am super excited as a fan. I can't imagine how the girls are feeling. Just this last pass here for Tiari. She does a round off whip half into a massive front full. She looks excited about it. She only did two passes, but she got a lot of bonus from her jumps as well, which means that her start value is out of a 10, even though she only did two tumbling passes. Her first pass pretty much tells you she's ready. She soared on this first pass. Big double pike, great controlled landing. She nailed it. Really nice routine by Tiari. Really nice meet by Tiari. Exactly. Back over to the beam. Couple nine seven fives back to back for Nebraska. Showing some heart here is now Megan Versailles Carr. It's on the beam for the Corn Huskers. Megan has beautiful lines. She's a taller gymnast, and she uses it to her advantage. I mean, her her long legs, her hands work so nicely in unison with her body and her movements. It's so pretty to watch. Getting ready here for her series. Back hand spring layout, step out. Beautiful. She had a little bit of a loose leg in her back layout, which normally once she tightens that up, that'll get rid of that deduction, but the judges might take a little from that. That as well, little bit of a leg lift there. I can tell you that Salas with a 9-8 on the floor. Round off one and a half, dismount to a stick for Megan. Great job. Coach Heather Brink told us that before she goes on beam, she tells her just be beautiful and consistent. And that's what she did. Capping it off with this great round off one and a half twist to a stuck landing. Impressive landing indeed for Nebraska. As now we get our first look at Minnesota Golden Gopher freshman, Hallie Remlinger as Hallie with a 9-9 career high already as a freshman. Coach Jenny told us that Hallie's not really a smiler. She's used to doing really serious routines and this year she's come out of her shell and smiled more. I love that. Starts off with a really big double pike. Nice landing. Notice the mat on the floor. You're allowed to have a mat there for extra cushioning on the landing, but got to make sure that you don't trip over it, which I myself have done in the past, but it is a great cushion for your ankles, especially this time during season. Cornhuskers with another score that is hovering right around their average on the beam. Meanwhile, Remlinger putting on a show on the floor. She goes for a combo pass, a one and a half front layout. Really nicely done. You see Salas right there with the high five there. Salas in with a 39-375. New career high all around. Really nice all around score for Tiari. Coach Jenny Hansen told us that this is actually music from Cirque du Soleil and definitely fits Hallie really well. Just the last pass, it's a double tuck. Great landing. Wow, awesome routine for the freshman. And there's that smile. Nice job by Hallie on that floor routine. And first high five is from Anna Loper. Love that. It's another look at that big last pass, the double tuck. She lands a little bit with her chest down, but she pops up right away, reacts quickly, and no deduction landing. So this will be Roby, Kinsey Roby. You see the scores right there, 975, 975, 97. Kinsey Roby up next for Nebraska. She's a redshirt sophomore from Gardner, Kansas. Now what she just did does not look that difficult, but 
If I could put into words how hard that is to do a press up to a handstand, it is so difficult and she did it effortlessly. What a nice addition to a beam routine. Aggressive front aerial to split jump. That's the type of beam worker you want. You want someone that isn't afraid of the beam, that just goes after it. Great back handspring layout series. This is a great start for Kinsey Rohe. Turn. Coach Heather Brink told us that Kin Kinsey's been fighting for a spot in the lineup, so it's really nice to see that her hard work has paid off. She got this fourth spot in the lineup. That's a that's a huge honor to go that late in the lineup as well. Just the dismount for Kinsey. Side aerial full to a stick. Her chest was a little low on the landing, but great routine. Check this out. She jumps up into a straddle position and goes all the way up into a split handstand. That is so great. And shows her flexibility there at the end. Nice job. Impressive start for Roby. Lexi Ramler, a 9925 would give Ramler a 39575, which would tie her all around career high, which was also the record at Minnesota. She did it last year against Maryland. I would say the chances are pretty good that she can get a 9925. I Lexi think Ramler. So. I totally agree, Dean. And that was a great start to her routine. She was a little off and she danced out of it. That's a veteran move. Notice the positions on these leaps. She goes above and beyond on the leap positions. You could take a picture of her in midair and you would find nothing wrong with that position. It's beautiful. She goes for her second pass. It's called a Rudy. It's a front one and a half twist. So far, so good. She's on her way to tying her career high. Just having so much fun in this routine. I love to see Lexi be both a talented technical athlete and a performer. It's her last pass. It's a complicated one. A round off one and a half twist, step out into a double twist, and she nails it. That is a hard pass alone, let alone to do it at the end. What a special athlete. Lexi Ramler. Brilliance. Great routine by Lexi Ramler to cap off a phenomenal evening for her in the all-around. Here's that Rudy. She gets a great lift and completely sticks it. And here's the twisty. She goes one and a half step out into a double twist and nails the landing. That's the kitchen sink and then some, isn't it? <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> Impressive indeed. Taylor Houchin. There was some talk that maybe Houchin would sit this one out. I'm so glad to see that she's on the beam for Nebraska. I am too. Taylor is a great beam worker. She is so elegant on this event. Her lines, her focus, it's great. She goes for her series, a backhand spring layout. She seemed a little off in the air and she completely maneuvered it to get no deduction on the landing. It's a veteran. Yep, Houchin's got a career high 995. She's averaging this year a 985 on the beam. Beautiful front aerial for Taylor. She does a lot of singular skills which means that she has to do more to gain more bonus to start from a 10.0. But everything she does is so exquisite and so pretty. A little funky there going into her second jump. She looked like she was a little off, but maneuvered it nicely to get a nice position in the split jump. Hitch kick to a side aerial. Really solid. Word is it's a 9.825 for Rambler, so she'll fall short of her career high. And just the dismount. I 
don't know if that was a stick or not, but it was beautiful in the air. <laughs> Taylor Houchin, first in the Big Ten, fourth nationally. Here she goes for that dismount. Really nice set. And just a, looks like the teeniest scoot back, but a great redemption after that fall on bars for Taylor. So Anna Loper, the PA announcer, getting the crowd fired up, and now the music rocking for Anna Loper. This routine is so much fun. Anna does a, such a great job tumbling as well as dancing, feeding off of the crowd. She's going to start with a front layout to a massive front Rudy. We talked earlier about how she and Lexi Rambler are such good friends. Notice Lexi was right there in the corner cheering her on. I love to see that. Do want to clarify some numbers. So Rambler's career high is a 39.725. She fell just short of it at 39.625. And as you said, she's cheering on her teammate, Anna Loper. Here Anna goes for her second pass, a massive two and a half twist. The same pass Taylor Houchin did. They both do it really well. It's a unique skill there. She does a full turn with her leg up. You don't see that very often on the floor. It's nice to see her add that in there. Last breath before the final pass for Anna. Round off one and a half to front layout. Great finish to a great routine. And a great night for Anna Loper. Great night for the Golden Gophers, one after another. Let's take a look at that unique skill to start here for Anna Loper. It's a really nice full turn there with her leg up, showing off her flexibility as well as something different. And then there's the big one and a half into the front layout and a smile upon landing. Sierra Hassel, senior from Johnston, Iowa. Career high of 9975 on the beam for the Cornhuskers. Sierra is the type of person you want anchoring your beam lineup. She is aggressive and she is confident. Great opening skill there. Solid front aerial. There's that skill again where she takes her eyes off the beam. She executed it very nicely. Full turn. So far so good for the senior. Just the dismount left. See if she can get the stick. And there it is. Great routine by Sierra Hassel. What a recovery she's had since that fall on vault. Yeah, give Heather Brink's team a whole lot of credit here. Sticking with it on the beam. That in itself is a talent, and this Husker team has shown nothing but perseverance. Really impressed. Paige Williams. Talk about power on the floor. Get ready to feel it. 995 career high. Paige Williams can get up. Paige is a great anchor to a floor lineup. She has it all. She has the sass, the fun, the tumbling, the flexibility. And you're going to see why right here in this opening pass. It's a front hand spring to a double twist. Great height and great landing. She's another taller athlete, but she maneuvers herself on floor so nicely. Look at the height she gets on those jumps. That's what sets her apart from everyone else. Hassel in with a 9875, the last beamer for Nebraska. 
She goes for her second pass. It's going to be a round off one and a half to a front layout. She opened up so nicely in between those two skills. Just a tiniest stutter on the landing. She almost looked a little uncertain of where she was. And the last pass for Paige Williams. A Rudy, a round off one and a half. The team is jumping up and down. They love it. Nice work by Paige. Take a look at the second pass for Williams. She gets great height here on the one and a half, opens it up, sees the ground, and connects it right to her second flip with a nice smile to finish it off. Got to know where the camera is, right? It's a part of the sport. Jennifer Hansen. Got to be pleased. You see Paige Williams. Unofficially... We do believe Rambler is your all-around winner, just ahead of Loper and Salas will finish third. And then DeJesus and Houchin. What a battle, though, every single week. And now that Salas is into the mix, and you got Ivy Lou. Obviously, she doesn't always compete in the all-around, but, man, this Minnesota team is loaded. Having three all-around competitors that every week can battle it out for the all-around crown, that is so exciting for this team. But also, they're so supportive of each other. I mean, we talked about how Lexi Ramler and Anna Loper are best friends. That's exactly what college gymnastics is all about. And here we go with an exhibition routine for the Golden Gophers. First pass is going to be a Rudy. Landed a little funny. She had to leap out of it a bit. But I love that she can just get right back into the dance. Extra gymnastics for a wonderful crowd here. Anticipating a big meet as Minnesota will remain undefeated in Big Ten action, just like the Michigan Wolverines. Really fun routine here. She had a little bit of a stumble there on her second pass, on her connection pass, but doing a really nice job so far. It's Mallory Lednavy. Getting a chance to show Jennifer Hansen, who's right there, cheering her on. Just the last pass for Mallory. She's going to do a double tuck with the help of the assistant coach. Again, this is an exhibition, so the assistant coach is out there to help Mallory Lainavi, as you don't want any injuries. and. A little extra touch there. What a performance for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Taylor Houchin, number one in the Big Ten on the beam. Loper outstanding on the floor. We'll talk all around and we'll talk Minnesota victory when we come back. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Social distancing helps you avoid contact with those who may be infected with the virus. What can you do? Steer clear of crowds of 10 or more people. Keep a distance of six feet between you and others in public spaces. And if possible, work from home. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Lisa Byanton and Tyra Buss break down everything happening in the conference on the Big Ten Women's Sports Report. Thursday at 6.30 Eastern on BTN and the Fox Sports app. The band was out, the cheerleaders were out, the fans were out for good reason. Minnesota looking like a team that can win a Big Ten title and make a whole lot of noise in the NCAAs. They remain undefeated, beating a very good Nebraska team here today in Minnesota. The final results, Minnesota in with a 197.4, Nebraska with a 195.7. 
Impressive scores, particularly on the bars and on the beam. It was a three gymnastic race. You see Lexi Rambler on a loper and also you got to give a whole lot of credit to Tiari Salas as well for Minnesota. She was outstanding as well, but Lexi Rambler already with two tens this year on the beam joins me. You get the all-around title. Great crowd there for big-time gymnastics, Lexi. How are you feeling about being undefeated going into the big fives? It's pretty cool. You know, we've been working really hard this year, um, and just to see it all come together is pretty amazing, and just to be home is pretty cool. Lexi, how are, are you and the team feeling going into the meet next weekend with this big win today and two 9975s in the same meet? We're super excited. You know, each meet we've been improving, um, putting experience in our back pocket, and we're ready to just continue and have some fun. I want you to talk a little bit about the work of Salas because she was outstanding today. Yeah, she's been doing awesome. You know, working really hard in the gym, um, and just to see her really just shine out here is pretty cool to watch. Lexi, you always shine. Thanks so much for being with us. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, Lexi Rambler, as we take a look at the highlights. Break it down, Olivia Karras. Lexi Rambler is beautiful on every single event. That vault was stunning. Then she caps it off with a stuck dismount on bars. Casual 9975. Then she goes over to beam and does it again with a beautiful 9975. And then Floor has a party of her own with a great 9825 to finish it out for a big win for Minnesota. As we look at the scores on floor for Minnesota, of course, you'll see Lexi Rambler with a big score. Jennifer Hansen's team, look at those scores. Loper with a 9-9. Paige Williams with a 9-8-7-5. Solace with a 9-8. How about the youngster Remlinger as well with a 9-8-5? Hallie did a great job, and she should get some recognition for her work on floor. She was explosive, she was confident, and she looked like she had a great time out there. Nebraska not too shabby on the beam either. Nebraska is a team that will make some noise the rest of this season. Sierra Hassel, Houchin, one of the best in the country with that 985, a 49075. I agree. The final three competitors there, Roby, Houchin, and Hassel, they've got something cooking over there in Nebraska. Those three are destined to get some massive scores. So here we go. The updated standings through the weekend. Minnesota and Michigan remain perfect. Give Brett Nelligan and Maryland a whole lot of credit. This Nebraska team very good. Michigan State is back as well. All of these Big Ten teams could make some noise at the Big Ten Championships in a few weeks in Columbus, Ohio. Quick final comment from what you saw today, Olivia Karras. This was a great meet, and it had a lot of hype coming into it, and it did not disappoint. I am really impressed with Minnesota, but at, right as, just as you said, give Nebraska some credit. They came back on beam after a shaky meet, and they did a really nice job capping it off there. So two great teams going into a great big weekend. And that's going to wrap it up from Minnesota, where the Minnesota Golden Gophers remain undefeated in Big Ten action as they will head to Toledo next week. We look forward to that. Of course, the all-around winner, Lexi Rambler, who shared an all-around title in the Big Tens a year ago with my broadcast partner, Olivia Karras, who did outstanding again for our tire crew. I'm Dean Linky. Coming up next, it's Big Ten basketball and beyond. Good night from Minneapolis, where Minnesota knocks off Nebraska. Competitors. Thank you.
Thank you.